welcome back to Miss K Chris. This is Ruth and I'm here to do a Q&A video for all of you guys. Without further ado, let's go ahead. Alright, so let me just open up my Instagram. If you haven't yet been following me on Instagram, do follow me at Miss K Chris on Instagram. That's where I post or I go live most of the time. I go live uh, every once a week to answer your questions if you have any. And I also post hiring alerts and any inspirational stuff that I think might help you in your journey to becoming a flight attendant. So let's go ahead and answer those questions. All right, so we have a lot of questions, so I'm so sorry guys if I won't be able to go to your questions, but I will try. Okay, so, um, hi, Ate hi Ate and River, how are you? We're good. <laughs> From Aman, Amuan Ju Fly. Okay, so that's our question. How are we? We're good. We're very good actually. And yeah, so lo and behold, okay, so her question is, Hi, Miss K. Chris. Can you give us tips on how to pass Oman Air interview? Well, Oman Air interview, for me naman kasi, the interview, it could be different from you guys. But for me, I had an initial interview with the agency first. And after 8 months, that's the time that we had the final interview with the employer. So maybe my tip is to make sure that you have the correct BMI because you can never pass the initial interview if your BMI is not on point. So that means your height is proportionate to your weight. So at that time, I was really underweight. So I had, I was lucky enough to have eight months to prepare and try to gain the weight that I needed to. Okay, let's try again. We ran out of memory. So anyways, um, my tips for Oman Air interview is make sure that you have the right BMI. Make sure that you prepare for your interview by researching about the company, the, the country, the um, what is the job of a flight attendant entailed, and um, all those things. Because the only way that you will pass that interview is to prepare for it. So you have to know the answer to the questions. You have to exhibit the right flight attendant um, qualities during the recruitment. Sometimes they do a group a group session or like a group interview kind of thing you have to be prepared for that kind of interview um yeah it's so easy everything that i'm saying right now i also given out tips about that on my youtube channel so just check out my playlists below all of them applies to the flight attendant interview um preparation and also i have a book dedicated for flight attendant interview preparation check out my book this is available on shopee or on amazon.com and on my website if you want an ebook version so yeah um prepare for it have the right bmi and yeah just go with it with the right attitude and the right you know just open your eyes to what to expect and i think you'll be more than uh, equipped enough to pass the interview so that's my um, that's my tips for you guys for Oman Air interview actually Oman Air interview is mostly like about almost pareho lang it's the same as other interviews there is they have the same criteria they have maybe they're not as strict as the others but it's still the same work that you have to do if you want to pass it all right so that's my um, tip for lo and behold so she has a follow-up question gusto ko po sana magkaroon ng idea what they are particular about when hiring FA yeah BMI that's what they're particular about so Shauna Patel do you have any idea on how the Istanbul interviews are like no I have no idea I never applied in Istanbul Airlines so yeah Dil Shaad V competency based interview tips and tricks please oh my god what is this i really don't know what a competency based interview is hmm. maybe they're trying to see if you're competent for the interview or for the job so i guess i'm just trying to see what i have in my brain right now so um if you are going on a competency based interview you have to know the what are the criteria to be competent and then have those okay so you have to clarify first what is it that they're trying to 
to see they're trying to ask of you and then make sure that you prepare for it like for example if they are asking for a flight attendant position they're usually their competency that you're asking for they're looking for number one is teamwork so that's why they have a lot of team activities during the interview so that's the competency that they're looking for they're looking for people who knows teamwork or who can exhibit teamwork during the interview not just saying that I know teamwork right but you have to show that to the interview show that during the interview so how do you do that so uh, I have tips about group interviews check it out on the videos uh, but basically that just means that you don't fight with anybody you don't over over talk over someone else you're not rude to anyone else you include everyone else you know you try to be friendly to other people so that's what uh, teamwork competency is so like I said uh, to pass that interview know what are the criteria and then once you know it then that will be the time that you will be able to show that during the interview all right so this is not common to us here in the Philippines so I really don't know what a competency based interview is but that's just my idea about it Kim Shi Bells, is there any possibility that they will hire FA even with moles? Super madam po kasi moles all over my body. Eh. Okay, so yes, I know flight attendants who have moles in their faces. They are still hired and sometimes it's all about a look, the demand, if they really need flight attendants, and also your attitude towards your moles, your attitude towards yourself. That's how people who have moles get in the industry okay so a combination of all of those and anyways if it's inside your body it will not be an issue maybe just for Qatar Airways because they ask you about your moles during the interview so all you have to do is tell them that you have your moles um, you have to declare that you have your moles because when you get in there and then during the medical they discovered that you didn't declare these things you might go home because that already happened in Qatar before so that's just how it is sometimes it's all about a you know if you have this condition like you have a lot of moles and it's not a straight yes or no answer if you were going to be a flight attendant or not because each airline has different policies each airline has different rules so you as someone who wants to be a flight attendant you just have to go to the right company all right do you get me okay so I hope that you got the answer for that Kim Shibels love healed is that your baby po yes that baby in the picture is my baby river okay so that is my Instagram post where I ask you to comment your questions so yeah it's my baby river and yeah it's been awesome shop elixir miss K Chris I'm confused at the moment for as a 157 cm is the minimum height for requirement for Oman Air but the agencies here put 160 cm on their postings I'm only 15 cm but I can reach 212 cm on tiptoe what should I do okay so shop elixir if I were you, you just have to try because um, the agencies what they do they just want to make sure that they hire as many people as possible so if konti lang yung nag hire it's like I said on a previous video, sometimes the hiring is dependent on the demand and the supply. So if there's so many people who is a supply and the demand is also great, then they could try to manipulate that by putting the requirements higher than it's supposed to be. Like you said on your comment that Oman Air really requires 157. Yes, that's true. But what the agency does is they want a smooth um, a smooth transition or a smooth sailing job so what they do is they want to eliminate the others because if they can only you know be because of the supply I'm trying to what I'm trying to say because of the supply because marami naga apply uh, there's a lot of supply so they can pick their choices right so sometimes one of the choices that they want to pick is the height It's one of the most common uh, ways for them to to make sure na to to make sure that they don't have a lot of applicants okay na hindi rin naman um, you know some way for them to lessen the applicants because they are getting so many so if they wanted to have lesser applicants they will put the standards higher 
So it's happened. This has happened before. So what happens is if pag konti lang yung nag-show up, that's the time that they will lower the requirements. So you just have to be on the lookout, uh, or you can just be makulet and still try even with that high requirement because they will interview you still and they will still uh, receive your resume and they will not tell you point blank no you're not a uh, hired <laughs> unless um, unless that's their directive from the airline but yeah I really don't know I'm not from Oman Air I'm not from the agency so I really can't uh, tell you what's gonna happen but I can tell you my opinion is if my opinion is if you really want to be a flight attendant still try even though those things are in order so don't try to let them stop you okay so also deal with the deal with it if ever be prepared also if ever they say now yeah we really don't accept this as much so don't be devastated um, you know it's okay to feel sad and okay but at the end of the day just know that it's still you you're still worth it you're still good enough Maybe not just for that airline, but you could try to the other airlines. I mean, like, don't let it shake your confidence, okay? So, I guess that's my very long answer to your question. <laughs> okay, next question. Bilia Teresa. Hi, Miss K. Chris. I just want to ask if it's still possible to get into an airline even though his or her eye vision is in 2020. Yes, it's possible. Can we wear contact lenses or have to have plastic treatments before? You know, thank you so much. Um, Vilia, Trisha, uh, yes, it's possible. I flow, I fly with a lot of uh, flight attendants who wear glasses and contact lenses during the flights. Vilia, Trisha, hi Paul. What if my friend has scoliosis? That does it simply state that she can't get into any airline agad puba or if? There are following consideration. Thank you so much. So about the scoliosis, Trisha, what they have is each airline has their own considerations. With Qatar Airways, you have to have at least ano, 12 degrees or less. Yun yung sa kanila. Yun yung sabi ng friend ko. And um, with other airlines naman, as long as sa uh, x-ray, hindi nag-show, you know, the not the... Kasi meron kang special x-ray that you have to take if you have to check for scoliosis. Yun yung maraming shots. And then you also have the general x-ray that you have to get when they're checking you for the medicals, which they check the lungs. Okay, so that general x-ray doesn't say that you have scoliosis, then it's good. Okay, some airlines naman, um, they ask for everything. So yeah. It really depends. I don't memorize all the requirements of all airlines, okay guys? But this is just what I know. With Qatar Airways, it's 12 degrees or less. Paso ka pa rin. With other airlines, as long as it doesn't show in the x-ray. Alright. So, Nima Lima L is asking, Is makeup compulsory for flight attendant? Yes, it is compulsory. CJ Ladaga. Hi, Ate. Any idea po if very strict sa height requirements ang Vietjet Air? They will be having a walk-in interview this coming November 4. Wow! Vietjet Air. 170 cm po kasi nakalagay sa requirement nila, pero 168 lang ako. Air Asia po kasi is super strict. High check pa lang, rejected na ako agad. Okay, I'm so sorry to hear about the Air Asia, CJ. Um, with Vietjet Air, I've never applied to them, so I don't know. But my advice for you is still try, still try to go. Kahit na strict sila sa height, at least you tried it, no? Kesa naman sa hindi ka pumunta and the opportunity has come and passed and you didn't do anything. So it depends on you, where would you feel better? Will you feel better na you didn't do anything or will you feel better na you did something and you know then at least you know and you can move on with whatever life has to offer okay oh well, i just want to say now being a flight attendant is not the be all and end all of everything i know you guys already know that um but uh, just like me i stopped being a flight attendant but life goes on and uh, you can still be happy if not but uh, because this channel is dedicated for people uh, trying to be a flight attendant i would really suggest that you just try just give it a try and if it didn't happen it's okay if it happened congratulations all right so yeah uh, next question is from mayor doma 
Hi Miss K. Chris, kapag po ba umaten ka ng assessment day, ng may braces ka, mababa ang chance na makuha ka or even subject submitting application online with your photo. Well, hindi naman po. May natatanggap naman po kahit na meron silang braces. All they have to do is say na, or all they have to, they just have a deal na when they start flying, they have to remove the braces. So, yeah. RxNMC. Hi, Miss K. Chris. If fresh nursing graduate po ba, mag apply for cabin crew, may chance po ba matanggap kahit di po board passer. Thank you po. God bless you and your family. Thank you, RxNMC. Yes, you can still be a flight attendant even if hindi ka board passer. It's not a requirement. Sync with life. Do recruiters ask for salary certificate or something like that to verify whether the candidate is not lying about their work experience? Wow, grabe. Paranoia to the highest level. <laughs> okay, guys. So, I, I just want to say that no, they don't ask. In my experience, both airlines. They don't. <laughs> okay, so oranges and squish. Oranges underscore uh, underscore squish 03. Hi, Miss K. Chris. I'm having a scar on my left eye below my eyebrow, but I didn't think that I can cover it with makeup. Will they offer me to take as a cabin crew? All right, RNGs. Um, I really don't know the answer if it's gonna be a factor, but what I know, what what I know about it is, they will tell you right away if that's a problem after your interview. They will probably say if you pass the interview first, they will say to you that is there some way that you can get rid of this scar? Uh, we will give you three months to get rid of it and come back to us, and we'll see. So that's what happens if you pass the interview first. So my suggestion for people who have like scars or anything like that in their face, uh, who, who are having doubts if they can still become a flight attendant, what happened to my friend is that she applied and she declared her scars. So what the company said is that come back to us after three months and if you can remove the scar, you are hired. But they will not tell you that if you did not try in the first place. So first of all, you have to pass the interview first. After you pass the interview, that's the time that they will offer you the job after you removed some certain scars or something. So also depends on which airline because that airline is Philippine Airlines. So I don't know with other airlines if they're also considerate like them. But that's the deal. You never know. So you will only know if you try. Okay? Can you get my point? Sometimes I get so pumped up by this question. Because I know that uh, through my experience, I know that nobody told me to... Nobody told me to go for it. But I did try and I realized that all I have to do is really take a, take a step take a risk for myself what will i lose if i try i will lose um my time maybe my time for preparation my time for hoping my time for dreaming but what if you what if just what if you get it then all your dreams came true okay so <laughs> it's only for you guys um what i'm saying right here will not benefit me it will only benefit you so all i'm saying is that everything that you're asking me right now um The answer is just try because some airlines it's not okay for them the other airlines it's okay with them so you will never know the difference until you try and you will never know you can never get your dream if you give up so just keep on going for your dreams guys so that's my point <laughs> that's all the questions for this week's Q&A video. Thank you so much guys for sending in your questions. I enjoyed answering them and some of them triggered me. <laughs> but yeah, I am so glad to be back here on YouTube. I have to admit, I've been 
out and about for a few days, a few weeks because you know, hashtag mom life. If you haven't yet seen my mommy channel, go ahead and subscribe to that one because I'm very active on that channel right now because of you know, baby river and all of that. But I still have you guys in my heart all the time, so don't think that I have forgotten about you. So, yeah, I'm trying to make more videos on this channel. So, comment down below what type of videos you want to see coming out next on this channel so I would make them just for you. Do like this video if you like it and subscribe if you haven't yet been subscribed to this video. And that's it guys. I will see you on the next video. God bless and I will fly with you soon. Bye!